In this episode of Mind Pump, so look, we talk all about fitness, health, building muscle, burning body fat, but we also talk about current events and what's going on in our lives. Yeah, that's right. We do that in the intro portion of the episode, which is the first 42 minutes. So we start out by talking about our weekends. Adam took his family out to the beach and had a great weekend out there. Forgot to bring some warm clothes, so he had to go to REI to buy some something to warm his body up. And saw that Viore is now at REI also. Ooh, look at that. They are making waves. Now, Viore is the makers of the best athleisure wear you'll find anywhere. They are one of our sponsors. And they just released their fall collection of brand new athleisure wear clothes. We got a discount for you. So here's what you do. Go to Viore Clothing, that's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump. And then on that page is going to be a code. And that code will give you 25% off your entire order. Then I talk about making sauce with the family. We do that every year. Everybody got together and we took 900 pounds of tomatoes and turned it into delicious pasta sauce. No, you can't have any. Stop DMing me. Come on, man. Then we talked about Justin's feral cat. He's got a brand new cat to take care of his rat problem. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I talked about my workout this morning. I had all the time in the world to set it up. Um, I took my four sigmatic cordyceps along with some caffeine and theanine and basically destroyed the gym. Had a great workout. Um, and four sigmatic is the makers of the best cordyceps you'll find anywhere. And cordyceps improve stamina and endurance. So if you take them before your workout and you have an extremely long or grueling workout, you'll notice that you have more stamina and gas in the tank. So if you want a discount on Four Sigmatic, Cordyceps, or their other mushroom products, go to Four Sigmatic, that's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash Mind Pump, and use the code Mind Pump at checkout for a full 15% off any of their products. the mushrooms. Then I talked about the movie Good Boys. That was hilarious. Um, and then we talked about, uh, I guess, internet gaming disorder is a real recognized disorder now. So that's kind of crazy. Then we got to the fitness portion of this episode. The first question, can adding cycling to your training help grow your legs in any way? Of course, we're talking about bicycle cycling, not cycling steroids, uh, although both of them will build muscle. <laughs> That'll work too. Yeah. The next question, can being too dedicated to training and nutrition actually impede progress? Um, so mm. being obsessed with your diet and obsessed with your training, could that actually make you progress slower? You might be surprised with the answer. The next question, this person wants to know if you should always start every single workout with your compound lifts or can it sometimes be beneficial to start with your isolation type lifts? Now remember, compound lifts are exercises that use more than one joint of your body. Um, for example, a squat or a bench press. Isolation lifts tend to use just one joint, like a curl or a chest fly. And the final question, if all of us had to compete in American Ninja Warrior who would win and which obstacles would each of us dominate? Um, I'm going to give you a little clue. I would dominate none of them. Yeah. There's not a lot of <laughs> dominating on that course. Zero. Um, also, this month, for the first time in a very long time, MAPS Starter is 50% off. Now, MAPS Starter is a phenomenal program for those of you who want to get started on a resistance training program. So if you've never lifted weights before or – you haven't lifted weights for a very long time, I would say for six months or longer, MAP Starter is extremely appropriate. It'll train you for stability, muscle building strength. Here's the best part. You don't even need to go to the gym to use it. MAP Starter utilizes a physio ball. Those are those big, round, bouncy-looking balls. And dumbbells. That's it. So physio ball and dumbbells at home. Phenomenal workout. It's also a great workout for those of you that want to Get the benefits of resistance training like boosting your metabolism, sculpting your body, shaping your body, mm. but you just don't want to go to the gym and you're not trying to train like a bodybuilder. You want to lift weights, but you're only trying to do it a couple days a week. You want to get the benefits. You're not trying to get all crazy with it. MAP Starter, phenomenal program. It's great for younger people. So if you're a college-aged female or male that really doesn't have a lot of experience lifting weights, start with MAP Starter. Your body will progress faster with this appropriate and professionally programmed workout. Now, it's 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsstarter.com. There's two S's in there. It's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com. 
and use the code STARTER50. That's S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0. No space for the discount. Oh, and by the way, it's a phenomenal gift for people who you want to get into working out. So like parents, family members, siblings, get it as a gift. They will love you for it. All you need is balls and bells, Sal. Did you guys have a good weekend? I did, man. We got away. That's our first uh, getaway with Maximus. I Ooh, saw the pictures. Go, man. Yeah, it yeah, looked great. Yeah, yeah. And then we went out to, you know what's so great about that spot? Uh, the sanctuary. I shouldn't even talk about it. Why are you doing that? I know. Yeah. It's going to get crowded now. It's only got, it only has 60 rooms, right? So it's uh, 60 rooms. They're all on the beach. I was telling Katrina as we were, we were laying there last night, uh, just having one of those, having those, you know, super present moments where I'm just like, man, so blessed to be here. Just amazing. Just to be laying in bed, listening to the, I mean, it is so loud. There's a video I did. I, I, I posted on Maximus's page of uh, him sleeping, and you can hear the ocean in our room. Like, just it's loud. Mm, I mean, it's yeah. you're because we're the ultimate white noise. Yeah, and so and you and you can, I, we sleep every night with the the door wide open. So I sleep with the door wide open. I can lay in my bed, watch the waves crash, and listen to it. And then I have a fireplace in the room, so the, that keeps it. So obviously, it gets cold at night, but with the fireplace blowing the heat off. And, and the nice fresh air coming in. And he slept good. Oh yeah, we had his bed. We had set up his bed right next to the fireplace, so he had it was nice hey, and warm. How much him. shit do you have to travel with when you have a baby? K- K- <laughs> Katrina way, <laughs> Katrina way overdid it. Everybody really? does, bro. bro. Oh, yeah. So she she because we were we were here working right. We left after uh, after we recorded on Friday. And so, and we were trying to beat traffic. So, like, she had already loaded everything up, and I, I so I had no clue like what we had, we were bringing. But I get there, and the range is completely filled to the back. I'm like, what? We're not, and we're not bringing the dogs. I'm like, what did you bring? Like, what did you bring? Why well, just, just wanna, in case? Yeah, that's what, yeah. I just want to make sure. Poor guy, you know, like because when you get there, you can't park at the actual beach house because they're in this on the sand. You you there's like a parking lot, and then they have uh, golf carts that like take you to oh, okay. to your room. And so we get there, and I'm like, this poor kid, he's got to take our stuff, man. It, it took him two different sh- loads to get our our truck unloaded and into the-, the Now, did you use uh, not even no, a quarter of it? No, yeah. we didn't. She brought, she brought like this- the bouncy thing that goes inside of his his new we have this this uh what are those called the the travel plays what are they called the pack, pack and play pack, pack and play, play yeah, right? That's right and we have like a the newest state of the art one that has fucking four level <laughs> conversions twenty gizmos yeah it did to talks just give him a cardboard box is <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I is, honestly the thing we use I've been talking about all the different things right it's been a while since I've talked about things on the show that I I know I mentioned the first three the Doc Todd and some other stuff but. So, one of the one of the things that I use that was, it's been a game changer is the what do you call those like baby Bjorn or whatever? Yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the front little, pack. Yeah, the, the fr- one we have dug in every once in a while. Yeah, 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 it's like yeah. a papoose. <laughs> so he <laughs> just loves that, and I just opened it up maybe a week or two ago. I didn't realize. So we have three of them that I hadn't opened. I didn't I didn't look at the like the age, and I just figured he was too small. Like he'd have to grow a little bit. And there was one that was designed for him like right away at newborn. I was like, oh shit, why have I not been trying this? Because I know that he loves uh, he loves to be carried, and and he has right now like I don't know if it, it's just because his lungs because he was uh, uh, preemie that his lungs aren't fully developed, mm-hmm. and so his breathing isn't the best. Like if it's at all cold in the house or at at, at all, or he's laying down, sometimes he gets kind of congested mm-hmm. or, or whatever. So. He li- he definitely likes to be up because when he, you get him up, you can tell he's. Bringing, we'll put him in the bathroom and mm-hmm, steam. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, I I got the Bjorn thing out, put him on that, and he just fucking goes to sleep, dude. It's like the newest secret weapon. So, what do you guys use? Go for a long walk on the yeah. beach? Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, no. So I took him on the beach this weekend, but what I've been doing at home is I just throw him in that thing and I walk him around the block. He, before I even get around the block, he's out. So he this just, is your first little vacation thing with the baby. Yeah, we haven't spent the night away from home with him yet. Oh, uh, this is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this was the first and it was great, man. Like he a was a milestone. Yeah, we took him down to uh down by, you know, the pier at Monterey and and walked down there and we had lunch both days and he was great. Katrina's a trooper too. She's not like, you know, some girls are really like um 
particular about like breastfeeding or anywhere. Like she'll Katrina's a fucking gangster. She don't care. Yeah, she'll just fucking <laughs> in the restaurant, freaking throw a blanket over herself, whip it out, and just like start feeding them. She don't give a shit. You know? <laughs> Good. Well, fuck, you should. I, I, and I don't mind either. It's so stupid that yeah. everybody freaks out about that. Yeah, fuck, it's so dumb. When I, I was a kid, I was I'm the oldest of four. My mom used to breastfeed. Yeah, well, I care. yeah all the time. It's not a big. It's it, it's a big deal because we make it a big deal. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a big difference with uh, uh, you know sexualizing a boob versus feeding your baby. Well, I see it all right. the time. In Santa Cruz, I mean, they're a little more. They don't even have a covering. They're just. Oh you know, yeah, like, yeah, like restaurants and stuff. It's yeah. like whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, she's she's cool. Baby's like gotta that. eat. So she, I mean, and so we've got it down now because this time he's starting to stretch a little bit longer now. Two of the nights, I mean, he just uh, uh, again because I think his breathing thing when we're home, just that there's a total difference between being in the city and being out there on the ocean. Like he just was breathing incredible. Really? Yeah. So both nights we got five hours of sleep. Yeah. Which for us has been like and the sound crazy. of the ocean. We yeah. we for sure evolved to be soothed by the sound of water. Because I mean, you know, how mm -hmm. long can humans go without food? Like you know, we could go for a long time without food. We can't go very long without water. So we were always near water. So the sound of water, even just running water. You know those little. You guys ever use those? Um, they're like uh, I don't know what you would call them, but they make they they they're like little mini waterfalls. Yeah. And they make that sound, and yeah. they're so relaxed. If you go to like a massage, uh, yeah. go get a massage. They'll typically have one or whatever. Super soothing and relaxing. So you know, I was out there too. How cool is this? So <laughs> I was in such a hurry because we recorded that I didn't really pack very well. Didn't look at the weather report or anything. Just assumed because it was so hot here that it would be really hot there, but it wasn't. There was you know it was actually cool, especially at night. It was cold. Mm -hmm. And I packed shorts and t-shirts. That's it. Not a single long sleeve, <laughs> not no pants or anything. So at one point we had to stop. We stopped at REI and I went in there and, I, and originally Katrina was like, I had made her drive, but we drove like two more exits up and there was like right next to our resort, there was like a Walmart. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to go buy a $30 sweater. I'll never fucking wear. I'm like, let's go up to the, like the mall area, which is like two more, two more exits up. And there was an REI there. I'm like, okay, I'll go there. Get something you like. Yeah. Get something I like. I go walking in there and I was planning on getting like some uh, Patagonia gear and sh dude, sure as shit. Right next to Patagonia is this massive Viore setup. Oh, I saw your video. Yeah. Yeah. You posted about this. Yeah. That dude, was they, cool. They made it. They're going mainstream. Uh, yeah. Bro, to be an REI and to have a section next to Patagonia and to be as big or bigger than Patagonia section. That there. means you've proven that. Oh, you can sell. dude. So cool. I thought that was pretty neat. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, uh, making sauce this weekend with my parents and uh, my, my cousin's friend was asking about Viore because he's He's heard, he's been hearing about the investments that they're getting because he's in the he's in the, he's in that market you know about investments and stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. he's like I know you work with the company Viore. I heard that they're getting they've got a lot of money to expand. And then my cousin Gabriel was there. When, you know when we did our event up in the city yeah. at the Viore store. Yeah, mm -hmm. when we were there, my cousin Gabriel's fiance that he just got engaged. Uh, congratulations! She bought him a pair of. Viore close. So he was raving all about it, just totally selling it, which was pretty cool. Yeah. So it's good that, you know, it's no, nice it's, to see oh, that. Yeah, they're in surf stores all over the place, too. I keep running into like little, like, like just some stores like on the strip that has like some Viore stuff and it's like everywhere now, mm -hmm. like all over. Well, Sanders. that I know that the 45 million that they just got infused, I believe that's mainly to expand, open, right? Expand to do, the stores to brick and mortar, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. How it's crazy great is having it at retail? How crazy is that? They started online. They proved the model there, and now they're going brick and mortar. I think that's the new model. If you, if, if you know, I, I, I think that's the model. No, especially the way they're doing it, right? So it's like the store, the in the stores don't carry, which is the opposite normally, right? Normally the stores have like everything, right? Mm -hmm. Where you yeah. for most clothes, where they just kind of use it like a uh, showcase, showroom. yeah, showroom or come try it on or whatever. But everything is mostly online, so then they don't need as much square footage. So their stores are these little pop ups. So it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah. It so works. Brilliant. Yeah, it's cool to see them succeed like that. They're doing very well. So yeah, we made sauce this whole week, which is my, it's such a great, as I get older, I really- How many wife beers you get through? <laughs> <laughs> That's my question. Yeah, wait, counting everybody in my family or just me? <laughs> yeah, all, everybody. <laughs> How many wife beers yeah. had to go get did washed? You, did you see the videos and pictures I posted yeah. about yeah. it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we did uh, 900 pounds of tomatoes. 900 pounds? Yeah, yeah which Woo. is about, that's roughly that's generally- a half a ton? Yeah, generally how much we'll get. So my dad goes and gets, gets Roma tomatoes, 
which are the, those are the ones you want to use for, for sauce, or as people on the East Coast say, gravy. It's so funny. I had people messaging me from the East Coast. It's not sauce. It's gravy. Fuck, <laughs> whatever. It tastes the same. Yeah. It's stupid. But anyway. Like um, soda and pop. Yeah, no, 900 pounds, and this time. Where, now, is this like, uh, are the tomatoes family grown, or do you guys go buy them? No, we go buy them. So my dad will go to Gilroy or, you know, out in that area, and yeah. he'll find a, where he'll find good tomatoes, and then he'll buy them in bulk. He'll go with his, my dad has a work van, so he empties out the back and just fills it up with boxes of tomatoes. Then he brings them back, and then the whole process is, you know, we wash them, we cut them, you cook them. After you cook them, we have this machine that you put them in. The machine spits out the seeds and the skin and, and creates the, you know, makes the sauce. Then you jar the sauce, uh, and then the jars you boil, which seals them, and then they're done. Now, how how much, have you ever kind of calculated, like, how much you save by it's not really you know what it's more about the whole family yeah thing. nowadays two things it's it's about the 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 process mm -hmm. it's what you, it's funny as i was there doing this because my cousins brought their my cousin gabriel just got uh, engaged to a lovely young lady and my cousin alex has been dating this girl for a while now and they're getting pretty serious so this was their first time coming to one of our annual, you know, making sauce because the whole family gets together, you know, events like, or whatever. Call it a saucing. And they were, they loved it. They thought it was so, because they're from the outside and I grew mm -hmm. up with it. So it's easy to take for granted. Although now that I'm older, I don't so much, but they're like, oh my God, this is so great. This is so fun because everybody's working together. There's different stations. We're playing music. We're, you know, we'll have a beer. We'll take a break for lunch. It's just this big event. And it usually takes Two two days, maybe three days to finish all the sauce. Oh wow! So they'll start, you know, we, we start on Saturday, Sunday, and then finish on uh, usually on Labor Days when they finish. So today, but because so many people showed up and we had extra people show up, we finished it all in one day. We started at five a.m. by nine. 9 or 10 p.m., done. The whole, All the sauce was like done. Like a factory. You guys have like stations for each thing? Everything. Yeah. And the machine we use, we used to, my grandmother, we used to do it at my grandma's house. And when we did it at my grandma's house, at one point it got big where all my cousins were there. And we would have, I don't know, 60 people working at the same time, little kids running around playing the whole time. And my grandmother had this old school machine that would do this, this that would, you know, take out the, the skin and the seeds and spit out the sauce. Mm -hmm. And it was belt driven. I remember it when I was a kid because everybody always used to tell us, don't put your fingers near the belt or whatever. <laughs> that machine broke and it was like 50 years old or 60 years old. My dad bought a new machine. He bought his about five years ago. So that's the one we're using. So we're just, it's a good time, man. Everybody gets together and it's, it's a lot of work. Um, you could definitely buy plain sauce and it would be, you know, I don't think you're saving tons of money, but you don't get that that the connection of everybody doing it together and then the taste yeah. the taste is is, is your grandma like the quality control like the, she has the last say or who? she's handed it off now so now okay. it's no i mean she's there and my grandfather's there too but my grandfather my grandmother he just turned you know 78 my grandmother's not too much younger and they're older now so my grandfather comes in says hi to everybody goes on the couch falls asleep my grandmother <laughs> you know she'll go in yep. the kitchen because it's too hot and then she'll come outside and say hi a little bit and go back in and now it's my mom. My mom is the, and we were talking about who's going to maintain this for the next generation because I don't feel like anyone's going to do it mm. because it's a lot of fucking work. It's yeah. a, my dad has to drive all the way down to somewhere, either Hollister or Gilroy, <clears throat> buy 900 pounds of tomatoes, bring it back. And then, like I said, we had 30 people working in unison and it took from 5 a.m. is when they started till you know 9 or 10 p.m. in one day. It's like, are we gonna? Are, who's gonna keep doing this? So, I, I, is this a, is this typically a Labor Day thing? Is it it's always usually on? around? Yeah, my aunts make a joke about it. They think they're like, yeah, pick the hottest day of the year. That's always when we do it because <laughs> we're outside just sweating asses <laughs> off, you know. And then the best part is dinner that day is we'll have the fresh sauce, and oh, so we'll have. That's amazing. And it's you know Jessica loves it, and we were talking about this, and she's like, you know, when I have pasta sauce in a, in, in Italian American restaurants. They put so much stuff in the sauce, so mm -hmm. much shit. It's really thick, and there's all kinds of herbs and shit. Yeah. She's like, when I have it with you guys, it's very minimal, very clean, very you know basic. And I'm like, that's how, that's how you're supposed to eat it, or that's mm. how we eat it, or whatever. Now, do you guys put like, how does it, how do you divvy it up? Do you does everybody put money in a pot to go buy it? I figure 900 pounds of tomatoes can't be cheap. <sighs> that's a good question. I, I think we. I, I, I want to say my aunts and my mom divide the cost of the tomatoes. It's not a ton of money. Um, really? Know. Yeah, what, no. What, any idea what 900 pounds? Yeah, it's like 400 bucks, 350, 400 bucks. Wow. You, they'll give you a deal if you go buy them. We used to pick them. 
We used to back in the day. Oh wow! Yeah, back in this was before. This is when I was really little, so I never, I never was a part of this. But they would go, they'd find these huge, you know, uh, tomato farms or whatever, and then they would pay to go and pick their own tomatoes. So that was part of the process. And it's it's a it's a big tradition in a lot of families, and I know this because my ex wife's family did it, um, and they're not they're they're from a different part of Italy. And then the messages they get from people are like, oh, you know, we used to do that, or we do that every year, or whatever. It's a really nice thing. So I think I told my mom, I said, you know, I think I'm going to make sure that this continues. Yeah. So in the future, when you're not, you don't want to do this anymore, then I'll maybe we'll, maybe take we'll, over. we'll host it at Mind Pump. No, that'd be cool. Dude. Is there any meat in the sauce, or do you guys? No, you can that? put meat in the sauce afterwards, okay. but the sauce is just. So you have two options. Yeah, so when you take it out, you still have to cook it. So after right. you're done, after you're done, if you want to use one of the jars, you open it up. And you cook it, and then you add your garlic, your olive oil, your you know whatever you want to add to it. Yeah, because Courtney's friend does you know something similar, and and you know they're a big, huge Italian family, and she sort of stole recipe from it, but makes it with with meat, and it's it's God. It's, it's what if amazing. you threw like a massive tarp down in here, and you guys did it in here? It's messy, dude. It's <laughs> a lot of work. You throw bro. a big old huge massive tarp down. <sighs> it's a lot. I mean, you could, but because then you got air conditioning, you got a TV, you got music in here, you got. I mean, it is a it is an operation. It is a yeah. massive operation. I mean, that would be cool. It'd be fun. I should tell my parents. You should. You, should, to keep, to keep, <laughs> no. you know what? Like I don't know. Like so, uh, I, I think I've shared with you guys that I'm my my best friend's mom is dying of cancer right now. We're probably going to lose yeah, her any that. day now. And one of the things that breaks my heart is that they they started a tradition that I was a part of back. Uh, it goes all the way back to like middle school um, when I was going with him, and it was I never really had like a really consistent family uh, tradition, anything like that. Mm. And to me, when I look back to my memories as a kid, there's some of my fondest memories mm-hmm. are 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 those traditional things that we used to do, and we haven't done it now in like six seven years. And man, I miss the fuck out of it. And it's so you don't realize it when you're a kid, do you? And not only do you not realize it, but then. All it takes is one or two years to stop it, and it's so hard to get it going again because some, mm. as simple as what you guys are doing is actually still such a big deal because it takes Everybody somebody benefits from it and too. and yeah and it takes somebody who's going to organize it and say I'm going to go get the tomatoes and fund it and get make sure everybody mm-hmm. knows what day like and you stop that one year it's, yeah. it's so I'll, hard to get it going. I'll tell you what if there's anything that I value uh, that I've learned from my parents and they they teach this without teaching it because they just do it. It's that they value uh, tradition and the and the and the the value that comes from the process of doing things. Like yeah. they're not sitting there saying, "Yes, they definitely say that the sauce tastes better." I get that, but you can make it as you need it, right? You can buy tomatoes, make your sauce. You don't have to go and do this huge event or whatever. But it, it, it's not it's not about the savings of money. They never preach any of that stuff. They've always preached it's a tradition. It's a good time. We all get together. I really enjoy it, and I see the work that they put into it. And when you're a kid. You don't fucking you don't understand any of that value. But now as I'm older, oh, yeah. you know, I really see that I, I really value it's a community thing. Yeah, it's the process, dude. Yeah. It's a long, hard work together in the moment. Nobody's on their phone, having good conversation, you know, good time. I wish we had that. All we got is potatoes to offer. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know yeah, what? We didn't have anything like that. My cousin's uh boyfriend is Irish from Ireland. Yeah. And he was telling me all about that. And he says that they use potatoes like bread. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, My mom will boil potatoes. And literally just put boiled potatoes in the middle of the table, and that's like what you use. Like like you we use bread. Eat it. Yeah, you just eat it like that. I'm like nothing else. It's like no, <laughs> that and, goes, and Guinness. Yeah, yeah, and he goes, I fucking hate potatoes. Now. <laughs> 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 it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, crack, crack. what are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> how's your How's your weekend? I saw you were doing some stuff with your kids. Yeah, I mean we we had my sister in law over, and uh, they they were up for a wedding. Actually, somebody's getting married. Uh, you know, during the Labor Day weekend. And so we watched their kids pretty much the whole weekend and I was trying to entertain them and do fun stuff outside and climb and do, you know, do stuff on the trampoline and all that. But yeah, dude, it was pretty, I mean, I don't have any cool stories. Like, I saw a cargo net. Your kid, did you put a cargo yeah, net Yeah, I did put that up for the kids to uh, uh, climb up onto the, uh, the, the tree fort that I had built before. Because I'm trying to make it more functional now. Now that we actually have an established spot, like I, I have ordered a couple other things on Amazon to get them to climb with these this knotted rope. And then I have, you know, a few I'm going to hang from another tree. And like uh, I took some of the rock climbing grips and I actually like bolted them into the tree so they can climb up towards. Oh, that's great. To get to it. So it's just more things for them to kind of explore and, and do cool shit. You know, it's in my backyard. I was going to ask you about the, the cat. 
Didn't you get the feral cat? Or whatever? Yeah, I did. Is it working it's, yet? No. The, like, I have to wait three weeks, which is like a total bummer. It's like, we actually were a little worried because it, it wasn't uh, going to the bathroom. Like, it was just like hiding the whole time, like the, the, the last three days. And then finally, it was like kind of coming around and has been walking around. And we've, uh, we, we've just, we're not even allowed to let it out. So it's like, okay, it's there. And like all the, there's been animals. Another cat had come by to kind of check it out mm-hmm. and was looking down there. And then, you know, my dog's freaking out about it. So we'll see, dude. Like, meanwhile, all these rats are just taking oh, over and just eating everything. I hate my, those bastards. Oh, Fuck, it's dude. awful. Can't I want to. You know, let loose the killing machine. What do you keep rubbing on your uh, your your head? Oh, this is um, Taylor's got me doing this this essential oil thing, dude. I don't even know what it is. He he, it looks nice. I'm not gonna lie. You you look very. It's actually funny. You, you look glowy. You, you yeah. it's funny yeah. you said that because somebody so radiant. Somebody made a comment on uh, my last Q and A that I did on Instagram, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. People can't see that already. I mean, I've been using it now for I don't know. I'm on. Is that that's it right there? Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. on week like three right now. Of of you, Taylor brought it. He's like, he really likes the company. He just and what he'll do sometimes when we're shopping like a company to potentially work with is he'll he'll bring it to one of us whoever he thinks is most likely probably like that's he, why he brings me the supplements yeah yeah so he, <laughs> he brings each of us different stuff and this is like you know taking care of your skin and caring about your look so obviously you know Justin and Sal fall out yeah, of favor on this one a little bit of a gator <laughs> yeah. skin. so but he gave it to me and he says please use it every day you know and I I read the back of it where I mean I can use it on my face it's but what I've been really actually liking it is uh, on my psoriasis so. It's uh, I've been rubbing it all over my face and r- rubbing it all over my dry spots where my psoriasis, and I actually really like it. So we'll see. I don't know. He's got me using. It. He said to use it for like a month consistently. Give him his feedback, and then mm. we'll go from there. But, oh, good deal, man. Yeah, yeah, we'll good see. Deal. We'll see, dude. This because we started a little late today. I did my workout uh, at like my favorite time, which is two. My two favorite times are like 9 30 10 a.m or one like like noon or 1 p.m which is cool because i worked out with you guys a couple times too but this, this morning i i knew i would have time to work out because we were going to come in a little late so i set up i prepared everything so i had a, a early morning you know meal drank all my water then i did a little stack i did my caffeine i did my theanine with the caffeine then I took my cordyceps, which if I know I'm going to go hard, cordyceps is the way to go. So I went mm. to Club Sport and fucking destroyed it. The my stamina headphone. booster. Destroyed it. And there's two, a couple of things I want to share with you guys. Would Number you, one. Would you say that the uh, of all the mushrooms that you use, would you say the cordyceps are what you use the most? That's my favorite one because it's- Because you feel it the most or it's what? It's fun. It's fun. It's not a stimulant. So I don't. it's not like I take it like caffeine and I feel hyped, but I just go. You know what I'm saying? You know when you're squatting and like especially squats because that just gets you gassed, right? You know when mm. you're squatting and you and you start to get gassed and you feel like you just don't want to do anymore because yeah. it's exhausting. You know yeah. that feeling? Yeah. yeah. When I take cordyceps, I, I I can push further. I just have that like I feel like I Extra have that gear. Yeah, where I just keep keep going and keep going. So I did. Uh, I've been doing a lot of split stance exercises. So I did back step lunges, and then uh, Club Sport got. I haven't been there for about a week. They got a hip thrust Nautilus machine. Have you seen this one? No. So it's a bench, and it's on a it's on a like a pivot or whatever, and it's plate loaded. So you plate you you load the plates, and then there's a belt that you hook over your waist. Uh huh. It's a very well made machine. Wait. So the belt that goes over is it? It's like a cable. No, that, no, no, no. Or you're, is you're, it actually plate loaded. I'm laying back on it, so it's a bench that's like this. Yeah. There's a plat. There's a platform I put my feet on. So here's my body. Here's a platform. Feet are on there. Right. The belt goes over my body. Uh-huh. And then there's plates over here. I've seen them. I just never seen oh, them in person. Before. Okay. So they work really well. Interesting. Really well. So I was, and I. And, uh, here's the thing. I'm sure you guys can share this. I've been working out so long that. I can tell when I do an exercise once or twice if it's something that I need to do. Mm-hmm. Are you guys like this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where you'll do an exercise like, okay, this is I can feel that this is working the areas that I need to work. And I've been doing split stance exercises and stuff to kind of focus on my – my hips have been bothering me a little bit when I do heavy squats, and I'm trying to work on my mobility a little bit. And I did that hip thrust machine, and I was like, this is exactly what I need to do. And I, got, I went up to four plates, squeezed at the top, got this really crazy – pump in my ass, which is kind of weird. You ever walk around with a pump ass? <laughs> it's a funny feeling. Justin knows what that's like oh, all the yeah, time, bro. I, mean, I feel like an Instagram just model. constantly <laughs> juicy. Out. But anyway, yeah. I, I did that, and then I did the rest of my workout, and I was just going nuts, and this guy comes up to me, this uh, older guy who 
also is pretty fit. He's a pretty fit dude. Probably in his, I would guess, mid-40s, late-50s. And he, like, kind of waves at me, so I pull my headphones down. He's like, hey, man. He goes, I hate to bother. He goes, you look really fit. And he goes, uh, your glutes look can great. Can I touch yeah. it? Yeah, he's like, can I touch your glutes? <laughs> I was like, sure. It happens. No, he goes, uh, and, and no, this was, like, this was really good. He goes, what's the one thing? Because he started asking me, like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I've just, you know, I've trained full body or whatever. And I told him about mind pump. And he's like, what's the one, like, most impactful thing that you've done for your physique to look the way that you do um, at your age? I told him my age. Good question. And I said, I, I, it took, I, I didn't even have to think about it. I said, consistency. I said, the most impactful thing I've done is I've never – really stopped. I've always, always been consistent. And I told him, I said, you know, great workouts are awesome and they can make a big difference, but nothing's going to impact the way you look like just doing it always, just not stopping, just being super consistent. Yeah. And it's a hundred percent. And he looked at me kind of like, yeah. And he's like, how long have you been working out? I'm like, since I was 14. He's like, okay, that makes sense. Well, you know, like, you sure it wasn't from the burpees. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so daunting, but because I think most people when they approach, it's so uh, all or nothing. Yes. Yeah. You know, if if people would, and I think that's some part of the message. I know we get, I did a post the other day about uh, Team Sweat. I brought that up because it's been a long time since we've talked about that. Plus, it was a photo of me that I hadn't seen. That's the first photo I've seen of me sweating in a long time. <laughs> but I think that's a part of the secret, at least the secret for me, of consistency for so long now is that I, I've learned to not approach every workout like it needs to be my last one mm. yeah. and it, you're not in a hurry no it's like yeah. you know it, it, those days like you said today like i love those days i love when i've got an hour to prep the workout i'm i've been thinking about the workout i could i can line up my meals and my supplements so it's like i'm like maximal and then i get after it for an hour and a half it's amazing but i mean let, the reality is that doesn't happen that often most times i'm going in there and i'm touching a few things or i might just squat or i might just work a mobility but I think that if we if we take the pressure off of every workout like a you know like the biggest loser like a last chance workout where it's it's always got to be all or nothing then that's why people I think fall off is because that's tough to stay consistent with that type of training you can't every day. you can't you got to look at it like this you're gonna do this forever <clears throat> yeah you know what I'm saying I'm going to the gym today oh and I'm gonna be going forever I'm always you're always gonna have to take care of your your body you're always gonna have to work on your fitness and your strength and your mobility, the the need to do so only increases as you get older. So just know that. I'm going to yeah. be doing this forever. So today I go to the gym. Oh, man, I don't have the energy to work out that hard. Or I, I don't know if, okay, I'm going to go easier because I'm going to be do back here. Can do. Yeah, I'm going to be back here again another 15,000 times yeah. probably. By the, <laughs> it's interesting. I, I told you guys I was going to start up basketball again. And like, so I'm playing tomorrow night. And Is that the first game tomorrow? Week. Yeah, it's the first game tomorrow. <laughs> it's just funny because. I'm fucking nervous for you. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know the, the mentality going back into that because I haven't been doing any conditioning, like team no sweat, all that stuff. Like I bought into your guys' shit. Um, and. <laughs> So I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And so like, you know, old me would just, I would just run like crazy. Like I would go like a maniac and, and just get back to just get my lungs back and get my conditioning back. But you know, me now it's just like, dude, I got to make sure everything's coordinated and my joints are all fortified and like my mobility's on track and you know, I can handle all these like really aggressive cuts and moves and things like that. That's where my mentality is now. And like going back into it, it's okay if I suffer a bit with the conditioning, but I want longevity. Yeah. I'll tell you the scariest thing about, uh, aging and weight training like we do. So we were sitting on our, our little balcony this weekend and, and watching people watching on the beach and stuff. And, uh, there's these kids. It was great. They were, uh, they're just probably there's five of them and they're just taking turns racing each other in the sand. And Katrina's a, uh, for those that I don't know, Katrina was a, a, a collegiate level basketball player. Oh, she still player. has that competitive eye. Right. I've seen it. Right. So she's definitely, a, she's a baller and she's an athlete. She always has been. And, you know, at, when we started dating, I actually really got her away from, she used to run. That was like, she used to run all the time. But yet then she'd ask me questions about shaping her physique and looking so I'm, well, we got to get rid of all this fucking running and replace it with weight training and, and dieting properly. So she's been fully bought into that for like the last five years with me. And one of the things is I'm watching these kids and it, it kind of dawned on me, like, I would be afraid to do that. I would be afraid to like like race someone like all out on the sand. You don't oh, practice it. Oh, that's a terrible idea. It is a terrible, <laughs> and it's a, and, it, and it's yeah. more of a terrible idea for somebody like myself because. And this is the dangerous part as you start to age and you and we we lack doing these things. And it did motivate me like the, the I'm going to run today when I train, 
And for this exact reason, because it was on my mind, like, wow, I don't want to be able, I don't want to be on the sand when Maximus is eight and wants to get a foot race with dad. And dad's like, oh, I probably shouldn't do that, you know, and not do it because I can't. Because here's what happens. Like, it's already, it's already dangerous if you're somebody who's out of shape and you try and explosively run on the beach. But I would actually argue that it's even more dangerous. you got hella strength and power. Yes. You know? Yes. And I didn't notice that until I got into my early 30s, and I'd have these moments where we'd be on the beach, and when all of a sudden my buddies and I'd be like, let's play some football. And multiple times I've strained like my hamstring or hip flexor just you know, running not even 100%, running like 70% on the beach because I've been strength training so hard and so long that I've built all this. I've got this power, but I don't have this explosive. You don't have this. And it's way more demanding on all your stabilizing muscles. Yes. Like being in the sand is – It's and it, uh, Joe DeFranco just did an amazing podcast about like why training you know, for running in the sand is a stupid idea. And I I completely buy into his argument because oh the, really interesting yes, it's, it's, it's a terrible idea because that doesn't translate to actual real force output like you have you have to have ground forces to in order to track properly and to to run and, and have you know work your speed like this is just like spinning your tires and and you're just you're training your body to try and react well, to that I think it's anything you practice uh it's, anything has a skill component and running is a skill and if you don't do it you lose the skill. That's just the bottom line. So you get strong, you lift weights, and then you. Say, yeah, but it's not just that. It's that again, like I was saying, like you. I've not only am I I'm losing the skill, but then I'm I'm training another skill to be really good at like lifting weights. Mm -hmm. Sure, I can go squat four hundred pounds, but then I lose the ability to go sprint in the sand really quick, and it's more dangerous yeah, it's now like that getting, I can, it's like quadrupling the horsepower of your car, but yes. you're not reinforcing it at all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. And that, and I was trying to explain that to Katrina because she was asking, she's like, oh, you don't think you could get out, get out there and go do that? I go, oh, I could do it. But I would, but what would happen is my brain would tell me to go as hard as I can. And my, my muscles, my glutes, my quads, which have been developed from squatting like crazy would give everything they got. But because I haven't trained like that, I would potentially tear something. And that scares me. And I think like that now. I never thought like that before. That's so funny. You know? It's totally true, though. Yeah. It's totally true. Oh, I want to tell you guys, uh, I watched a movie, Good Boys. Oh, oh I almost watched that Holy this weekend. Holy shit. Funny. These are young kids, right? Yeah, like, they're in sixth grade. Okay. And it, it was probably one of the top three funniest... <laughs> Really? Best comedies I've ever seen. Really? Yes. They did such a good job with it. It's so funny. They really? Such a good That's job. That's a with it. big statement. It's such a good job. Your they, recommendations are a little suspect, though. Sometimes. Uh, well, watch it and see. Let yeah. me, I'll, I'll, maybe I oversell it, yeah. but maybe that's my problem. It sucked. <laughs> yeah, Go yeah. watch it. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was, it's, they captured so well. Cause I remember when I was in sixth grade. In sixth grade, you're still a kid, mm -hmm. but you're about to not be a kid anymore. So you're kind of in between. You know, well, was it kind of a little bit uncomfortable be, being a parent now and like seeing these kids like no know, because they, that no way? because they did a good job with it. Okay, yeah, it's not like they said like you could tell. Remember when you were in sixth grade and you tried to act older and yes. you say things and say bad words, but you totally. know what the fuck they meant. Yeah, oh, right. Like right. there's like there's one scene where they were gonna sell one of their uh, they, they play this, this game with these cards and there was one that's really valuable and they're gonna sell it because they had to do. Anyway, there's a whole adventure in there. It's hilarious. So they had to sell this card, but they're afraid because they have to meet with an adult who's going to show up at the house. So like, well, what if he's a pedophile? So they're all worried and shit. So his friend's like, don't worry. I'm going to go get a bunch of uh, weapons out of my parents' closet. They have a bunch of weapons. So then they lay, then they show the table with all the weapons. Nice. And it's a bunch of sex toys. <laughs> a bunch of weapons. They don't, they don't know that they're sex toys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's a bunch of fucking sex toys. On the thing. So one of them was like, oh, look at oh, these. That's brilliant. One of them was like, oh, fuck, look at these nunchucks. And he's whipping her fucking anal beads. He's whipping her around. <laughs> and then the other kid takes it. He's like, oh, it smells bad. And he puts it down. Oh, no. Bro, the whole, oh, no. The whole movie's like that. It's wow. like It's like shit like that where they're trying like they, they cuss a lot but you can tell they don't know how to use the words right yeah, like, yes. fucking god damn it you know yeah yeah and if it's a 12 year old that's saying it <laughs> wow. there, there's one scene where they got in a big old argument with each other so there's three of them and they're fighting like yelling at each other but then they all start crying because they're, they're still 12 <laughs> still you know 12. Yeah, oh dude. wow sensitive it's yeah. a good it's a it's a we great almost movie. watched i wish we would have watched that now you know what i did watch is uh have, do, do either one of you guys do you guys stream hbo and showtime yeah you uh -huh. do yeah. you don't though don't. uh i have i think i have which one is Game of Thrones? HBO. HBO. Okay, I have HBO now. So I was watching um, 
what is it? Uh, Real Sports with Brian Gumble. I really mm-hmm. like, and they, they, he does like the he's way still they, doing that, huh? Yeah, bro. Wow, forever, right? Yeah, he's been there for a while. What they do that I like is they'll take like three stories, and they have their three their three main reporters or whatever that go out and interviews people, and then he kind of tear he, he ties it all in. But the one that like uh, actually got my attention that I wanted to share with you guys on the show today is uh, IGD. What's that? IGD. It's Internet Gaming Disorder. Oh, uh, it's a real fucking disorder now. Like, wow. Yes. And so, uh, you know, right away after I watched the whole episode, which was, I mean, they didn't say anything that you guys wouldn't be surprised by, but the fact that they coined it now, right. The fact that it's been, it's been labeled by whatever is, you know, psychiatric association mm-hmm. that, and it's, uh, uh now well, what do they classify as internet gaming disorder? Do they so, say? Yeah. So listen to this. So here's what they say. So they suggest that it, you can be, it can be identified by five or more of the nine criteria within a 12 month period. So here's the criteria. Um, uh, preoccupation with games. The individual thinks about previous gaming activity or anticipates playing the next game. Gaming becomes the dominant activity in their daily life. That's one. Two, withdrawal symptoms. When gaming is taken away, these symptoms are typically described as irritability, anxiety, or sadness. Three, tolerance. The need to spend increasing amounts of time engaged, uh, engaged in games. Four, unsuccessful attempts to control or reduce participation in games. Five, Loss of interest in real life relationships, previous hobbies, and other entertainment as a result of, with ex- uh, exception of games. Six, continued excessive use of games despite knowledge of psychological problems. Mm. Seven, has deceived family members, therapists, or others regarding the amount of gaming they're doing. So they're just super addicted. Mm-hmm. Eight, yeah. Use, use of games to escape or relieve a negative mood, i.g., uh, or feelings, helplessness, guilt, or anxiety. Mm-hmm. Nine, has jeopardized or lost significant relationships, job, or educational or career opportunities because of participating in the game. So it's they just say, like any other addiction, right? Yeah. So they say if they've got five, five or more of these, that they they have. This I freaked out when you read that. that first one. I was like, wait a minute, yeah, that's my kid. I know, but yeah, I know he's like one. He's got one of those. Well, so I mean, that's normal. It's slight addiction. Yeah, my favorite thing is to walk in front of you know my kids' friends and all that, and then call them noobs. <laughs> it really pisses them off, <laughs> bro. You ever do that? What's that move that they do? Uh, what's it called when they do this thing? The dab. Oh, dab. Yeah. yeah, bro. Do that in front of your kids. Oh, they'll fucking hate they you. They will be embarrassed. I, I do that. To I'm my- trying to learn the one. It's like this this Fortnite dance where you like where you do like the. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm trying to learn that one just to bust out in public and embarrass. <laughs> You'll embarrass the shit. Yes, that's a great. That's you have a, to do that. It's my favorite thing to do now. Yeah, is embarrass. Absolutely, <laughs> that's what you have to do. Yeah. and I can't wait. It's our job. If, yeah, it, I, I've. Have you seen those dads where their their daughters post post pictures on Instagram in like maybe like their shorts a little short or whatever? Yeah. So the dads. <laughs> the dad what, wears it. The yeah. Same. The, this one dad, I, this one guy I saw, he, he fucking would pick up his daughter in the same outfit. It's so, <laughs> so, so it's like, great. you put it, you post yeah. it, I'm going to wear it. That's, yeah. the, that's like, the move I'm for done. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's, I mean, the, uh, what is it? WHO, the World Health Organization has uh, put a thing out on it. Like it's, it's starting to get traction where more and people are, are becoming, just like five, 10 years ago, no one was really talking about it. Mm, Nobody yeah. was talking about uh, any- It seems so obvious, but I guess, yeah, it, it takes people saying it over and over for people to realize anything it's a we, problem. Anything we like a lot can well, become addicted. I really feel like it really started with our generation, like the the Atari, Nintendo, like oh, it yeah. started with us, but they have just put it, it's on steroids now. Yeah. I mean, they have really figured out, They were they went into it too, just- now that's such a money grab too. They're they're so smart. Not only to get the kids addicted, but they've also got these kids like the engineering's evolved crazy to where it's like you can't help but be like addicted and hooked because like all these like traps they lay out for you. It's totally, like, oh, you have to get back in. And they're t- they're talking about they were sh- they were sharing some of these kids, that, especially kids with like really wealthy parents, and they can get a hold of a credit card and use the credit card on there. Tens of thousands of dollars oh, to spend in app purchases and all yes. that. Yes, wow. Just like you know, like That's spend gnarly. spend you know nine ninety nine right now and automatically get that new gun instead yeah. of having to work through you levels. Have the new uniform, like all like dude, kids totally care about all that. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's, just that's tens insane. of thousands of dollars these predatory. kids are are, are are stealing from their parents to pay for all this stupid in-app purchase <laughs> oh, shit. Man. Yeah. Crazy, right? First question is from Mark Wools. Can adding cycling to your training help grow your legs in any way, or will it be detrimental? Depends how it's added, I yeah. would say. Um, sprinting, and I've, I've yes. been shocked by the muscle-building effects on, on legs that sprinting, can have several times. 
I've noticed it on myself. Now, I, now a little bit of a caveat here. My legs are my upper legs are the most responsive part of my body, so I, I can always make my legs big if I want. Um, I wish the rest of my body was like that, but my legs tend to do that. But I do notice, and I have in the past done sprints on mm-hmm. a cycle, um, and I've done outdoor sprints, and both of which have caused my leg muscles to actually build and grow, in particular the cycling. Now, I have had clients who've done this as well. Now, I, I, again, another caveat: these are typically fit clients. So I'm not having you know Mrs. Johnson who's just started with me sprinting on a bike. These are typically people who've worked out for me with me for a long time, very consistent, and we've thrown in a couple days a week of of hit cardio on a bike where they sprint, and they'll always you know I've had a, quite a few of them come back to me and be like, whoa, I'm noticing more development in my legs, and I think it's the explosiveness of the activity. Oh, absolutely, that's, happen. that's why I like the salt bike because it does have that low impact uh, you know way that you could you could implement that power. Uh, and, and be able to do that uh, in a way where it's kind of more controlled. Because I used to do hill sprints, and I noticed the same thing. It, I, I got great muscle development out of my quads, and my legs overall grew uh, as I was doing these hill sprints. And then I kind of, you know, used that same kind of uh, interval sequence on, on the assault bike, and noticed, you know, the same type of gains to throw in the mix. Mm-hmm. There's a, it's, there's a fine line here, though. Yeah, yep. it's it's be- a short window because. You know, you guys are both advocating sprinting on the bike. And if you're somebody who does, like like Taylor's into cycling right now, and he's cycling 60 minutes to 90 minutes minimum every time he does this, he goes on mm-hmm. for a long ride. Like, that's not a great way to build muscle in your legs. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because at that point, it's just like so a, a runner who runs for a long, long period of time, it's not advantageous for your body to carry a bunch of muscle Yeah. On it, so it'll you're it'll, teaching it efficiency, right? So it, it it's conflicting. It's a conflicting message. Now, if you're somebody who is squatting, you know, three times a week, you're eating, and that's the other thing too. You also got to take in consideration when you get on a bike the amount of calories that you that you burn, even if it's only for a short duration, say thirty minutes or whatever. Like that that can be a high calorie burn. You could burn eight hundred calories in thirty minutes of cycling easily, especially if it's high intensity. So if you're somebody who has a hard enough time eating enough calories to build and put size on, and then you add in cycling and hoping that that will build muscle in your legs, it might have the reverse effect because now you're starting to burn more calories than you can even consume. So there's that fine line there. But shoot, going on a a 12-minute like post-workout you know, cycling sprint or get on like the recumbent bike or the cycling bikes and do like you know, interval sprints for 12 minutes, like after, like, fuck, that could be incredible. But again, still making sure you're fed. So, so here's what I did. And this, uh, this was my legs got probably the biggest they'd ever gotten when I did this is I did two or three days a week of training my legs with weights, which typically included squats and lunges and Bulgarian split stand squats and those types of exercises. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, I would do a 15 minute, um, hit workout on, uh, an assault bike. Um, with high tension and explosive power. And when I did that, man, my legs just... And what, and, and part of the reason why I think they grew is, one, it's explosive. It's very explosive. I can, I can, I can output a lot of power um, in a different way than I can with weights. And the second reason is that the, that the short bouts of intensity with the bike gave me more stamina, which contributed to better workouts with my legs, with the squats. Too. I would also yeah. think that it would facilitate recovery faster, it too. Did. Yeah. It did. It right. did. So I just get these crazy pumps. Yeah, so that, that would be great. Like and that. some of the most muscular, athletic, like athlete legs you'll ever see, ever. Forget, okay, besides bodybuilders, obviously bodybuilders and powerlifters are going to have the most developed legs. Ice but skaters. It, the, ice, the sprinting, sprinting ice skaters and the sprinting cyclists. The sprinting cyclists. Have you ever seen no. the some of the top Monstrous. level? Monstrous. Sp- they have pro bodybuilder legs, and it's funny because yeah. they have super lean upper bodies. It's the most uh, lopsided, you know, bottom developed body yeah. I've ever seen. But the legs look like they they could be on the Olympia stage. Yeah. They're that muscular and crazy. I was looking. trying to explain this to my, you know, sister-in-law and, and brother-in-law are both like really into Peloton. And I, I picked this question mainly because that's that, you know, company, it, it's so popular right now. Everybody thinks that like that is like all they need right now to get in shape. Mm-hmm. And so to try and like unpack that and be like, well, here's really how I would use, uh, you know, a bike in my house, even if I was trying to train, like, yes, I would use it for uh, sprints and intervals and things like that. But also like you have to incorporate weight training. Yeah. 
Uh, next question is from YTEPJ. Can being too dedicated to training and nutrition actually impede progress? Well, yes, but let's change this for a second. Um, there's dedication and, there's and then obsession. there's obsession right. in, in mm-hmm. pathology. Um, yes, with nutrition, they call it orthorexia. This is a real medical um, term for an eating disorder revolving around the need to always eat perfectly healthy, quote unquote healthy, where you're it, you are obsessing about every calorie and macro and your food has to be perfect mm-hmm. and it becomes not a benefit to your life but a detriment. Orthorexia is a real thing in the health and fitness space. I've met a few people who I would – and I'm not an expert on this, so I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a therapist or a, a, a doctor, but I would guess that these people fall in this category of orthorexia where it's just absolutely insane. Bodybuilders and physique competitors and bikini competitors pre-contest – that's what orthorexia would look like all the time, right? Mm-hmm. That always walking around with the same food, counting everything. <clears throat> now with training, it becomes obsession. Um, your your life revolves around your workouts. Your workouts are no longer contributing to quality of life. They're now taken away from your quality of life. Yeah, you can't miss a day out of fear. Totally. It's more like that. And it depresses yeah, you and it ruins your day and it's just horrible. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would. Isn't there a quote that floats around uh, the fitness space that says something like... Uh, um, the the lazy is what referred to the dedicated is obsessive, yeah. something along those lines. Yeah, they right? try to normalize that. Right, right, right. Yeah, There's right. something along those lines. I, I mean, truth, unless we're talking about the, if we exclude the bodybuilding space, right? Like uh, most people don't fall in this category. Most people are not dedicated enough. No. Yeah, mo- the, the average person, 95 plus percent of the people listening to this <laughs> podcast right now um, are not dedicated enough. There's a very small percentage of people that I would say fall in the category. It's like, I don't know. I've been working out for three months straight. <laughs> yeah, I heard know. on Mind Pump. I don't want to get too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get too into I'm it. I'm gonna take a month off. Yeah, and, and and I and I think that was great that you you said let's rephrase that because de- dedicated to training and nutrition is is not going to improve. That's excellent. You should be dedicated yeah, to it. Right. Like that's a, that's a good thing. But obsessive about it is something different. And obsessive means you cannot ever go to. It. And here's the thing too. You can be very dedicated and may look borderline obsessive to somebody else because you have a specific goal. I'm sure there was plenty of people that thought I was obsessive when I had a goal in mind, when I was going to go from the guy in the worst shape of his life to the best shape of his life and then to try and compete on stage and then to try to go become pro. That was a fucking serious goal that required some serious dedication and consistency for years. Like I had to do that for, what, two and a half years consistently that – Maybe somebody else might go, oh, that's obsessive. Well, Mm -hmm. that might be obsessive to you, but I had set a goal in my mind of what I wanted to accomplish. And in order to achieve that goal, I had to be extremely dedicated to do that. You also didn't identify with you know, with it to the point where you're like, this is me. This is what I am. Right. This is who I am. That's not me at all. In fact, I, I'm I'm me. Right now it's me. Me is just like a normal physique. I carry myself between 10 and 14% body fat. I can have a weekend. Like, by the way, speaking of that. Man, dude, it's amazing how one weekend can make me fat, dude. <laughs> I mean, and and not only that, but man, I can't even do the same kind of fun damage I used to do. What did you do? So uh, let me let me tell you some of the things I had. I had peanut M and M's this weekend. I had gummy bears. Yum yum. I had uh, lobster pasta. Oh. I had breakfast burritos. Oh. I had Blaze pizza and wine and and champagne. All those things. Gut. Fucked up, bro. Oh, <laughs> Fucked up. Like, just crazy that I can't... I mean, and it's only... like It was like a two-day hiatus that I decided, you know what? We're out here at the beach. It's like, I'm going to just cut loose and just do my thing. And it's so funny that... Uh, I think when when we and I don't know if it's an age thing or that I've just I consistently try and eat really well most of the time and so I'm just more aware You're now. Just more aware. I, I wonder that like do, was I this like in 25 yeah. was that shit was I just I think I just up? drank Pepto back then to just deal. Oh yeah, yeah it's happening again. And you know what? What I think. <laughs> what I think. What I think happens. Is I think the. I think the adaptation process happens faster. Like, you, you know, when you're or like when what I notice is this. Uh, like by day three. You know, I remember telling Katrina, I'm like laying there and I'm like, man, everything that we can get right now, food wise, like none of it sounds good to me. I just want like a big salad. Like that's all I was telling her. Like I want like a big salad, something that just fresh, fibrous, easy on my stomach where everything else just sounds like it's going to make my my gut worse. But what I also noticed was 
by day three, it, it, even though I, I continue to eat this way, it becomes less and less offensive. And I think that if what happens to us when we're younger is we ignore those original original signs. Totally. You push through it. Yeah. And then if I were to keep eating that way for a week, I'd probably totally Dude, adapt to it. Totally. And then I'd be totally fine. Totally. We have a friend who we were talking to and we were talking about bowel movements and you know the healthy bowel movements. Just like, you guys poop every day? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, yes. And she's like, I've poop like two or three times a month, Max. I'm like, say what? And she's like, oh, I've always been like. So that. If I squeeze you right now, it's probably. She's shit. like, I've always been that. She's like, I've always been that way. This is just how I've always been. So it's normal. And I'm like, it's not. I yeah. said you're used to it because you always do that. But no, you need to be going to the bathroom every single day. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. so I think that's what it is. I think that some, uh, I think plums. now I'm just I'm yeah. so much more aware of that. And and I think to myself like, damn, dude, in the past I would just push through this. Yeah. yeah. Until it started to feel better, yeah. and then my body adapt to it, and then like you know fast food and all that shit would that's just crazy. be normal in the gut. Yeah. Well, okay. So so back to the question. I want to make a point here with this. Um, and I brought this up on a previous uh, podcast, but there was this big study that came out of Harvard and it echoed many other studies that that talk about the same thing and it talked about the health effects of good and bad relationships on your on your body and on your health okay and they found in these studies that having bad relationships so a shitty relationship with your husband or wife or loneliness not having lots of friends or whatever was as bad for your health as smoking 15 cigarettes every single yeah, day. I remember yeah, that's okay? fascinating. It, it actually, and having good relationships, having good people around you, people that you're, you have meaningful, close relationships with, including spouses and all that stuff, was more positive for your health on its own when compared to exercise or diet when they're, when they're compared on their own. That's how big of an impact it has on your health. Yeah. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is there's a lot of people – in especially in the fitness space, because we're talking about the this obsession with training and nutrition. There's a lot of people who are so obsessed with training and nutrition that they do so at the expense of relationships with the people around them. And they, they justify it by saying it's good for their health. Mm -hmm. The reality is you've traded something that's way more impactful for your health for something that now has become bad for your health. Yeah. So sure, you work out every day and you never miss a day and you count every calorie and you're obsessed about nutrition. But the 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 fact that you're obsessive about it and you feel bad about yourself probably because well, you're so obsessed and the fact that you lose relationships because you're probably not going out, you probably can't get, you know, you probably obsess so much about your workouts and nutrition that you don't hang out with very many people or surface relationships. So you have bad relationships. It's worse for your health. Yeah, it's hard for me to to put a negative kind Connotation to the word dedicated. Uh, I think that you nail it with obsessive. Like mm -hmm. obsession is a totally different mindset, I think, uh, towards the same goal. And so, like, being dedicated means you're including people, you know, and it's part of your core value. So, like, you're maintaining your core value, but being obsessed is by all means necessary and like burning the world around me. That's how yeah. I look at it. Yes. And I'll tell you what, I've been on, uh, you know, I've tiptoed this line. Um, workouts for me. I could say I was obsessive about them for a little while. Um, and I'll tell you what happens when you're obsessed about your workouts. You don't listen to your body very well. It's a hundred percent. Like I, if I'm working, I am going to work out today, no matter what I've made myself sicker many, many times where I go into the gym and I've got a cold and I know I would always tell a client not to work out, but for me, no, I'm working out. Now it turns into a, you know, a worse cold or an infection. Uh, I've hurt myself as a result. So no, Yes, uh, being too dedicated or also known as, forget the dedicated, obsessed about work and nutrition, 100% will impede your progress. Next question is from Lucas Hunt 10 When beginning your workout, do you always have to start your routine with the compound lifts? Can it be beneficial to save them until the middle or end of the workout? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Rule number one, follow the basic rules of resistance training. Rule number two, break them sometimes. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, everything works, uh, it, but nothing works forever. That's another one. Um, that's true. So tr traditionally, for the most part, yeah, you want to do your compound lifts first. They require the most strength, uh, coordination, Mainly because you're trying to avoid energy. fatigue. Yeah, and, and you want you want to use your big bang for the buck exercises first when you're the freshest. That being said, sometimes I do them at the end, uh, especially if I'm trying to feel a muscle, if I'm trying to feel a target muscle. There like, you go. Mm -hmm. let's say... Um, Let's say when I squat, I don't feel my glutes very much. It can be beneficial to do isolation glute exercises first and then go squat. Or if my chest uh, is underdeveloped and I don't feel it 
when I'm doing all my presses. Mm -hmm. It might be a good idea to do flies or pec deck before I go do presses. Um, I love sometimes doing the isolation movements first because then when I do the compound movements, it forces me to slow down and focus on what I'm doing. Because now at the end of the workout, I'm not squatting 315. I'm probably squatting 185 because I'm already fatigued from the other stuff that I've done with my legs. Now I'm slowing down. I'm squeezing. I'm getting a good pump. I've done this with deadlifts uh, where I almost always do deadlifts first in my back workouts. But there's been ones where I do it at the end. And when I'm doing it at the end, I am going way lighter and I'm squeezing and feeling the muscles more than I would normally. So absolutely, there's some benefit to doing that. I, I, I think I did this a lot when competing. When, when, when my focus was like how muscles looked and I'm, and I'm trying to sculpt the body versus caring about overall strength and overall like muscle gain because obviously nothing is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck than being the freshest – to a compound lift, right? Like if 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 you're you, two people day one, today's day one for both of them, and where the goal is over the course of the next six weeks, who can we put on the most amount of muscle? In those first six weeks, I'm going to definitely tell this client like we're going to start with compound lifts. They're going to benefit the most. But like Sal said, you know if you if that's been the rule for months and months and months, well, one of the best things that you can do is to break that rule. Just because your body, it's going to be, it's going to be a new adaptation. Your body's not used to that. It's not used to then all of a sudden going isolation exercises first, and then to more to your point, Sal. Like, so let's say uh, for me, like uh, the very first show I ever did, it was a critique on my shoulders. Uh, rear delts happened to be one of the very first things that I began like really focusing on to try and develop. Well, because rear delts became more of a priority than just building my overall shoulders. Every shoulder workout began with rear delts going forward during that that uh, off season for the next for the next show. And so I would do like rear delt flies with dumbbells, cables, and then I would do an overhead press. So I'd still do my big compound lift, but I wanted to feel more of my rear delts and I wanted them to get most of my energy so I could really get after them early in the workout. So there's definitely always exceptions to the rule, especially when you're when you're heading towards body sculpting, when you care about trying to sculpt the physique then the isolation exercises first can actually be very beneficial to that. Next question is from uh, Steffi Cuevas. If you had to compete in American Ninja Warrior, who would win and what obstacle would oh, each hilarious. of you dominate? <laughs> yeah. I could tell you who wouldn't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but which one would you have the hardest time that, with? Is I, my my question. Well, who to knows you. the who knows the obstacles the best? Well, because okay, know. so right out of the gates, they have you like running and you have to jump kind of side to side over uh so they're angled at like a 45 oh, these platforms yeah. and so you have to jump uh laterally and push off and get enough uh you know propulsion so you can hit the other side so back sal's forth. not even making yeah, i don't even think he's past yeah, I, lost. <laughs> I already lost <laughs> is there a deadlift obstacle so, <laughs> so sal falls on the first one know, out of the gates it? what what it what's you know it better than i do so what where would i fall or what would be our str my i think strength? you'd be great with anything climbing i think i think you have like a decent uh uh you know grip and pulling so i think you'd last but like you're heavier so you know the, the, the bigger guys over 200 pounds are going to have a really rough time this entire uh course let's yeah. be honest like so i think the trampoline one might really get you i don't oh, what know what is that one uh, just because of, you know, compromising like Achilles and all that <laughs> stuff, right? I don't really throw you under the bus. What does a trampoline but, one do? So what you is... have to run and you jump on this trampoline and then you kind of splay your arms and legs out at the same time on the spider wall to like hold yourself and wedge yourself oh, in between two walls. There's two walls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That He's would got be... long arms and legs though. But that might, yeah, yeah. right? That if, if if you can get past that part, we have to jump far yeah. enough. My money's on Doug. Uh, pound for pound, he's strong and he's light. Yeah, he's, he's nimble. And he's, he's built like an American. You've seen those guys? Yeah. They're always about oh, they're five climbers. Yeah, yeah, they're about five, anywhere between five six to five ten, and they're strong for their size. So, so my I, Achilles yeah. heel definitely gonna be my weight. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, you got your bottom heavy. Screwed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, it's not Just, set up for me and all this. I would climbing. actually think that's probably your, like Sal falls out first. Justin and I are close on the next. Doug yeah. wins probably. Doug wins. Right? Yeah, I feel yeah. like I wouldn't I even try though. I wouldn't even sign <laughs> up. I'd be announcing cargo it. nets. You know all that. I could probably do. I actually tried the salmon ladder. Uh, at this gym because it like looked like a fun time. Oh, did they have it? They had it. it How was, was it? Tough, but like, yeah, you could get it. It was a technique, you know, yeah. more than anything. So uh, if you had any kind of explosivity and you could really kind of harness that and control, yeah, it, I feel like I could do you that. You could do it. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I could do that. But I think you're right, though. I think the something where I'd 
that's definitely that would scare me to have to like jump you up jump front. and then you yeah and then stick like that <laughs> yeah, yeah fuck that and anything that where yeah. I'd where my uh, I'd have to be swinging I know that they do those some of those ones where you have to oh, grip the rings and then they have to like reach and kind of swing their way yeah, over yeah but that's that's hard for me now like cause yeah. I'm a lot heavier when I was a kid that was a that would have been a strength for me with my long ass arms yeah but now I'm 220 yeah. plus pounds dude it's it's not the same swinging around yeah. holding myself I told up. you guys about when I saw the the they did they had a chimp go through one of those obstacles oh they just crushed it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> dude, he was fucking. Well, that's every day. Having, yeah, he's like, whatever. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest jungle I've ever had to go through. <laughs> you know, I, you know what? Uh, if I had to do something like this, I would just follow Maps OCR. I would 100% totally. follow Ma Maps OCR. Oh, nice business plug and, right there. Well, it's, was I was. Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice job. Think about what would you do? How would you work out for something like this? That's yeah. the, that's oh, the no. best. Oh, you, you want a really strong grid. 100%. You want to be, you know, have endurance. I think those two things alone, like if you just hyper focused on that, would really because we already have the strength and all that we've yeah. been working on over the years. Yeah, and you know, you trim your body down. No, no, no that, that program would be perfect. 100 percent for sure. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.